Well, the three R's come from, originally in 1959, a book that was written by um, two individuals in the UK, Russell and Birch, and they developed the principles of the three R's um, as part of the principles of humane experimental technique using animals. They were sponsored by the U University's Federation for Animal Welfare, and the three R's are replacement, reduction, and refinement. And the principles, therefore, are basically that you should, wherever possible, replace the use of animals with non-animal alternatives. If you can't do that and you need to use animals, you should reduce the number of animals to a minimum, but a minimum consistent with getting a good, sound, experimental result. So you can go too low, you can also be too high. It's a matter of getting the right number of animals to get the right data. And also, if you are using animals, you should refine the way you use them so that those animals suffer as little as possible, no unnecessary suffering. And that applies not just to the things you do to the animals, like injections, blood samples, whatever you may do as part of the experiment, but it also applies to the way you house the animals, the way you keep the animals. So enrichment of their environment, for example, is a really important part of refinement. In most experimental situations, animals will spend 90% or more of their life not actually having procedures done on them. So by refining the way that they're housed, providing things like training of animals so that when they are being, uh, having procedures conducted, they're expecting it, they understand what's happening, and they're trained to understand that and be rewarded with posit positive reinforcement training, for example, those sorts of things. And in that context, good welfare is also good science? Absolutely so, yes, because there's a lot of work that shows that animals that are under stress, which could be stress due to fear, or it could be simply stress due to boredom in their housing environment, um, those animals are not going to give you reliable experimental data. They're much less stable in terms of providing data. So not only is there an ethical reason to comply with the three R's and seek ways to apply them, but there are also really good scientific benefits achieved with this. Now we're in an age now of extraordinary computing capacity, extraordinary techniques in bioengineering and genetics. People might be surprised that you still need animals at all, given the sophistication of the various in vitro and in silico techniques that we can now uh, actually deploy. And I think that's a very good point. And I think all of us are optimistic that the time will come when animals are no longer required, but we're just not there yet. So we can do incredibly sophisticated things with non-animal systems, including, for example, using human data. So we can do imaging in humans much more effectively now than we could in the past. And that means that we can use clinical data from, from human patients, from animal patients as such, much more effectively than we've been able to in the past. But the reality is that that's simply not enough. There is, there is so much that we still need to learn, but we're learning more in more detailed and sophisticated ways in terms of animal models. But every day I'm reading of alternatives that are being developed that will replace in due course the use of animals. So yes, my optimism is that it's coming. The problem is predicting how long that's going to take. Now, in your presentation, you raised the issue that, that, that increasingly people are talking about there being a crisis in science, in reproducibility of results, in there being a lot of uh, poor science being conducted. Uh, we have predatory journals, we have papers being published, and we have a huge market of up and coming scientists in, in the emerging economies. There seems to be a sense that perhaps we're losing control of the scientific process, that the peer to peer system is breaking down, and this potentially might have an effect on animal welfare. Oh, absolutely so, yes. I mean, the whole issue about reproducibility is not entirely about animal research. It's about research as a whole and the reliability of science. And I think that's something that the global scientific community absolutely needs to and is putting attention to. That doesn't mean that every experiment will always be reproducible in every laboratory. Um, but it, it's about reporting your experiments in sufficient detail that those who choose to replicate the work can have a good understanding of what it is that you've done and therefore what they need to replicate. Okay, And there are very good reasons for replication. You maybe need to replicate studies in your laboratory so that you can then go on to do further work, but you're proving the groundwork first before you go on to do further studies. So now let's take that 
principle into the use of animals and we can see immediately that there are all sorts of ethical reasons why particularly where animals are concerned that it's important that we have as much information as possible to ensure that experiments are reproducible, that they're reliable, that the evidence that's coming out of those experiments is reliable. And, and that's where things like the ARRIVE guidelines, which uh, I've spoken about, um, and which give 20 principles of what should be reported in a paper that involves animal research. And if all those 20 principles are fully reported in the journal, then there is an excellent chance that that will be reproducible by somebody trying to replicate that work. And those principles are now being accepted very widely globally by journals worldwide. But until we really get that sort of sense of this is what the real reward of science is. It's accurate and replicatable, reproducible data, as opposed to what I think at the moment is too much success is measured by how many papers can you get published in how, in how quickly, in which journals, with what rating. We need to somehow move away from that box ticking mentality back into where science has been in the past, which is it's the quality, the fundamental quality that really ma matters even more so when animals are involved.